so many of us have a loved one, a mother, an aunt, maybe even ourselves who have struggled with breast cancer. But as many more women are thankfully surviving breast cancer, quality of life measures have taken center stage in the advancements and treatments of breast cancer. Here to tell us about them is Dr. Elizabeth Komen, a medical oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Welcome, Dr. Komen. It's so great to have you here. Thank you for having me. It seems to be a more promising time in the treatment of breast cancer. Is that right? Absolutely. So more women are doing better, living longer with breast cancer, surviving breast cancer. But what that also means is that we need to start thinking about what experience are women having during cancer? And what is their life like after cancer? And what might be, be able to offer them in the future as well? And it's exciting that treatments are starting to focus in on this. There have been some very exciting developments in the preservation of hair. We know so many women lose their hair during chemotherapy. Absolutely. What's happening now? So one of the really exciting things that we're able to offer some patients is the use of something called a cold cap. And this is essentially a cap that women wear during their chemotherapy treatment for about 90 minutes or up to a couple hours, depending on the treatment. And what we found is that some women can actually preserve their hair during chemotherapy treatment, which is incredible. Entirely? So it depends, it depends. on the chemotherapy treatment, mm -hmm. and it depends on the type of hair that a woman has. But um, some of the studies show that between 20% to as high as 90% of women can preserve enough hair so that they feel like they don't have to wear a wig, which is huge. That's it so it huge. makes the experience more private for them that they don't have to tell the whole world I, I have cancer, need to wear a wig, et cetera. I know, it's, it's an extra devastating component of an already devastating treatment that exactly. you're going through. And I was going to say, you know, some women that I've had even choose less effective therapies because they are so terrified to lose their hair. Amazing. So this is an instance where we can say, we might be able to preserve your hair. Depending on the chemotherapy treatment right. that we give you, you might be able to preserve it. So let's give you the best shot at a cure. Absolutely. So important. And then there have also been very exciting developments in egg freezing, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. And tell us why this is so important to women. Well, it's so important because we usually associate breast cancer as a disease of women as they get older. But we know that over 13,000 women under the age of 40 are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. Those women may not even be in a relationship or may have not even thought about having kids yet, but desperately want to have them one day. So one of the things that we're able to offer women in conjunction with reproductive endocrinologists is the opportunity to bank their eggs, harvest their eggs before treatment, and if they are in a relationship with a partner who could fertilize with sperm the egg, bank embryos. And this is incredible because then they can go through their treatment knowing that their fertility has not been compromised. Because normally a, a chemotherapy treatment can render a woman infertile? Absolutely, absolutely. And there are some newer treatments that, newer medications that we can give women during chemotherapy to put their ovaries to sleep, so to speak. And we hope that that might preserve their innate fertility right. moving forward. But we have multiple options now. We can also work with reproductive endocrinologists. And the science to help. is so phenomenal that mm -hmm. these reproductive endocrinologists can even determine whether the woman carries the gene for breast cancer and exactly. remove it from the embryo. Exactly, it's phenomenal. It's and phenomenal. That's an incredible, it's almost something that you would want to do anyway if you carried the gene. Exactly, you know? right. So some women are at risk for breast cancer with BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutations. And those embryos or eggs with that mutation can be selected out so that future generations don't have to suffer from the same ailment. Just incredible. Yeah. Now, there are also advances with using the body's own immune system to yes. fight cancer. Tell us about that. So it's so exciting because for a century, this has kind of been the holy grail. Can we use our own immune system to fight a cancer? But it's really been elusive up until more recently, where there have been dramatic developments in melanoma and lung cancer and new immunotherapy treatments. But breast cancer has been a little bit sneakier. So what some breast cancers do is they envelop themselves in an invisible cloak, so to speak, mm -hmm. so that the immune system can't quite recognize that there's a cancer there. But there are some newer techniques that we're pioneering, particularly at Memorial Sloan Kettering, to remove that invisible cloak, so to speak, so that when we give immunotherapy, therapy, the immune system can recognize that there's a cancer there. So fascinating. And you yes. are running a clinical trial yes. in this right now, yes. correct? Yes, yes. Tell us about the research you're doing. So it's for er women with newly diagnosed breast cancer. Um, and what we're doing is actually putting a probe into the cancer, just a cold probe. It's, it's freezing. Mm 
mm -hmm. um, but it's very well tolerated. It doesn't cause that much pain. And what that does is it sort of shakes up the tumor a little bit so that that cloak is removed and that the immune system, we hope, can be more visible to the immunotherapies that then we can is get. Is it too here. early to tell? If it's, it's too working? early to too tell, early. Okay. but we have a lot of promising right. results so far. And mostly we know that patients are tolerating it, that, they're, that it's safe. Right. And the women that have participated, we're so grateful to. They're so excited about it, as are we. Well, wonderful. You'll have to come back and tell us your results. I would love to. <laughs> I would love to. Thank you so much, Dr. Elizabeth Komen, for that. Thank you for having me.